Today we're making keto tuna casserole with those viral egg noodles that are going around the internet. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll check out some of my other videos and become a subscriber. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. So good to see you again and I hope you like today's video. So before we get started, I just wanted to show you the care package I got today from the post office. The person prefers to remain anonymous and of course I respect that. Um, this package traveled a long ways and it is filled to the brim with keto chow, sweeteners, carnivore crisps. I, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate this. I mean this, this I do not expect large gifts like this. Thank you so much. You know who you are. Um, I, I just, I can't even, I can't even fathom, but I'm really going to enjoy making lots of things with the keto chow and the sweeteners in here. Um, there's even some bestie. I mean, I'm, I'm blown away. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. I, I will put all that away later. That was incredible. Um, I just, yeah, I don't even know what to say, but, uh, thank you so much. Um, let's get started on the noodles. So yesterday I shot a video and uh, you may or may not have seen it. I used beef to make these viral noodles that have been going around the internet. It uses, it's from uh, Anne at Keto Asian Flavors. Uh, it, it uses that uh, spherification method, the molecular gastronomy, and it seems like everybody is making these noodles now. So, um, I mean, I have noodles that I make that are kind of old fashioned. I, I you know, like you, you lay them out on a sheet and you cut them. They taste really good and I love them, but I wanted to give this a fair shot too. Um, and I'm going to make a casserole today. I'm going to make tuna casserole with these noodles. So um, the ones that I made yesterday, I used beef as the protein. And today I'm going to use Anne's exact recipe. I hope it's her exact recipe. I'm doing my best <laughs> to make the, um, I, I'm going to use the one with eggs. The only thing is, um, because of sensitivities, I can't use turmeric. Um, that gives me acid reflux. That's what it gives me. That burning sensation. So I cannot use turmeric. So I'm going to just live with the pale color of the egg noodles and I'm, and I'm okay with that. So yesterday, if you saw that video, I did a very poor job of the stirring and making the noodles look appetizing. I went back and I rewatched Anne's video to see, you know, that technique again. And hopefully today I do a much better job. I'm going to provide the link to that down below because I really think it's good for people to go back to the source and watch the original video because, you, you know, there's going to be something you learn there that uh, I have forgotten to say or, you know, she obviously knows her stuff. She's, she's one of those mad scientist type people. So I will provide that link below. In the meantime, I, I'm going to just go over what you need to make these noodles. In today's case, you need uh, two whole hard boiled eggs plus one egg yolk. So that's what I have here. You need these. The, these are uh, a type of salt. Calcium chloride is a type of salt. I believe it's also used in, in wine making. Um, I'll show that here. This one is relatively inexpensive. I bought these locally from uh, Well Seasoned Gourmet. It's a local shop that carries specialized ingredients. 
Uh, this was $7.99 for 100 grams. <laughs> so I haven't even looked on Amazon yet to see what these things cost on there, um, but we'll see. They did not have calcium lactate. You can use either calcium lactate or calcium chloride. What I have learned about the difference is that the calcium chloride makes for a firmer noodle and also it's way saltier so you have to make sure you really rinse the noodle well. This one is the sodium alginate and this is the thickener. It's similar to a xanthan gum. I, I often use xanthan gum in gravy but now I have learned that this actually does a better job and so I'm going next time I make gravy or some kind of sauce I'm going to use this instead. This however was $20 for this little one or 65 gram jar so that's a little shocking. Um, you don't need that much but I think today I'm using two tablespoons because I'm going to follow that recipe exactly so I'm going to have to find a cheaper source if I will continue to make uh, this, this noodle. Also need a squeeze bottle. I find it very difficult to uh, successfully get the solution in here so I'm using this glass to kind of hold it still for me. You need a funnel. I do have a smaller funnel but I can't find it so I'm using this big one. But the main thing is, you know, some way to pour the thick liquid into your squeeze bottle. You need water. So in here I have three cups of water. And in this glass bowl I have seven cups of water. And so now we'll just go through what, you know, the process. Uh, and you'll see it's actually quite a simple process. It's just a matter of knowing what you need and what order to do things in. So I had to dig out my Vitamix from the back of a cupboard to make this recipe and I cannot locate my little thing that goes in here but that's okay because I don't we don't really need it. Um, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to put these eggs, we're basically going to liquefy these eggs in there. <laughs> so here we go. I maybe should have cut those in half, but I didn't, too late. Okay, so there's my eggs in there. I kind of thought there was some salt in there, but I'm only gonna put in a quarter teaspoon because I don't really remember if that was true or not. But <laughs> Put a little salt hurt. Um, I'm going to also put in half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Actually first I'll liquefy those eggs and then I'll add the xanthan gum. I'm going to put in the xanthan gum, a half a teaspoon. And mix it up some more. Okay, so now I'm going to add the sodium alginate. Um, after I add that, it's going to go for three minutes. So there's one tablespoon and another tablespoon. Okay, and said it would get warm and it did. I am, that looks like vanilla pudding. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't taste like vanilla pudding, but it has a nice pudding like texture. So uh, what I'm going to do is pour it in here because you're supposed to scrape the bubbles off. Here, I'll show you the bubbles in there. But I think it would be easier if I, if I had a bowl like this to do that. So 
So this is going to sit in the fridge for about half an hour and then I'll be able to scrape the bubbles off. So um, then we will put it in here and make the noodles. So, uh, but first I'm, I'm going to put this away in the fridge and we'll uh, work on assembling the rest of the casserole while we're waiting for this to um, do its magic. Okay, so while the noodle mixture is uh, doing its thing in the fridge, I thought we would assemble uh, what I can of the casserole. So in the casserole, this is tuna casserole, two cans of tuna are going in. And uh, it's just a water pack tuna that, that I'm using here from Costco. Um, now, this recipe for the tuna casserole is actually on my website. You can print it out if you want. I'll provide the link below. Everything is the same, except that back then when I made this, I used uh, chaffles for the topping. And today I'm using protein sparing bread for the topping. The, this is one quarter of a recipe of protein sparing bread. In this case, the recipe I used was uh, my caraway buns. There's, I cut up six of them. And that, so that is one quarter of that recipe. I'll provide the link for that below if you want to see what's in those. Um, but this, you know, this will just make for, I think, uh, I think it'll be a little bit better than the one that's already on my blog. And then of course, the other difference is that normally I use my noodles in here, the ones where you bake and cut up into noodles. Um, but today I'm using uh, keto Asian flavor noodles. Um, we'll just see how, how that is. Um, I've been you know, really wanting to test those out and try them and I'm finally getting a chance. So um, the other thing, oh, well, the other thing that's different is I had a lot more vegetables in my fridge back then and now I barely ever use vegetables. So all I could come up with was a cup of chopped celery. There we go. Um, you can put chopped broccoli in there. Uh, I think I had a can of mushrooms. Um, I even usually put in a couple of tablespoons of frozen peas to give it that authentic uh, tuna casserole that mom made, you know, type, type thing. Um, you can leave out the celery and, and make this completely carnivore if you want. So entirely up to you. So I'm just going to mix those a bit. I actually kind of like a little bit of a crunch in my tuna, so I'm going to enjoy this celery, I think, today. Now, uh, what this is, is a half a cup of mayonnaise. I'm just going to get that in there. And this is a third of a cup of sour cream. If you, if you wanted to, you could use, you know, anything like um, Greek yogurt, for instance. I know a lot of people interchange Greek yogurt, sour cream, creme fraiche, those sorts of things. Any of those will work for this. Just for a little bit of seasoning, I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of Redmond salt. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of onion flakes. This is one teaspoon, so I'm gonna go with three of those. Oh, uh, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. And I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of garlic powder. Get these out of the way. Oh, um, I'm not going to put this in there yet. I want to wait for those noodles. So now that this is mixed together, I'm going to put this in the fridge to wait until we have our noodles and then I can kind of mix them together, top it with the breadcrumbs. Uh, I may even sprinkle a bit of cheese on it. We'll, we'll see how I'm feeling at the time. Um, you certainly can do that or not do that. Um, but right now we are going to wait for the timer to go off so that those noodles can come out and we can get started on them. Okay, so we have our mixture here. There's bubbles on that I'm going to take off, but first I want to mix up the calcium bath. 
I'm putting one tablespoon of the calcium chloride into seven cups of water. And basically you stir that until it dissolves and you'll know that it's dissolved because the water will go clear. This part does take a couple minutes. Okay, that looks clear. So I am going to scrape these bubbles off. Okay. So we have our nice clear water. The next job is to get this into this tiny little thing. Got my big funnel. <laughs> I really wish I knew what happened to my other one. Um, but it's not too bad. It, uh, especially if you have a, if you put this into a container with a pouring spout, I find that helps a lot. But even if you have to spoon it in, it should be okay. Trying to help it through the hole here. This mixture is thicker than the one I made yesterday. All right, I uh, can see that this could be a long process. I might have to just bite the bullet and pour it in. Okay, let's uh, abort that. Cause this, uh, today I used two tablespoons of the sodium alginate. Well, I can't say the word. Sodium alginate. All right, this, I'm gonna do this very carefully. Absolutely need a bowl with a spout if you're going to attempt this. Time for the lid. So here's where the magic happens. If you haven't seen this before, you want to stir the water, the calcium chloride solution, and then put this in like that and watch those noodles form. So if you can see, this is what we're getting. We're getting noodles. One of the mistakes that I made yesterday is that I was not squeezing it out close enough to the side. I was squeezing my mixture out towards the middle. So it's uh, better if you just keep the mixture go or you know keep stirring and squeeze the bottle close to the side of the of the bowl. You get better looking noodles that way. We're going to have to fill this up again, obviously. I think yesterday it took three fills. Okay, so I need to fill this up again. Okay, so the bowl of noodles is ready. We have some fantastic looking noodles here. Um, these look way better than the ones I made yesterday. They're more uniform. I think I did a better job. I do have a few circles like this, which is drips coming out of that. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with how these noodles look. And now they need to sit in the fridge for a little while. I can't remember how long, so I'm going to put them in the fridge. I'm going to go look that up. And when I come back, I will tell you how long that they needed to sit in the fridge. And then we'll assemble our casserole and bake it. So we'll see you in the next segment. Okay, so I've taken the noodles out. I did look up to see how long they're supposed to be in the fridge for, and um, I couldn't really determine that. So I just thought, eh, they seem okay to me. They're firm. Uh, I, I think they're ready to go. Uh, they did end up being in there for about an hour, so um, hopefully that is good enough. So I wanna put this casserole together and get it in the oven because I am hungry. So I'm going to take this over to the sink. I have a colander. The calcium chloride is a very salty solution. So I want to rinse this very thoroughly. Um, Anne at Keto Asian Flavors has instructions for making the noodles softer um, because I can tell they're quite, they're quite firm. Um, you know, they're squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. 
So uh, if you were just going to have them like this in a cold salad or putting some sauce on top, you may want to follow those instructions she has in her videos. But because I'm baking it, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to see what happens. So, But I am going to rinse the salt solution off very thoroughly. So I will be right back. This will just take me a minute. I'm just going to really try to get that saltiness off of them. Okay, so I've rinsed these really well. Look at these noodles. I mean, I like I like the color. I like the, the shape. Everything, everything is looking good. I'm just going to grab my pan. I have sprayed the pan. The oven is set to 350. So now I want to figure out how I'm going to combine this. I, I think I'm going to cut the noodles a little bit, um, maybe just with some scissors. I think it'll just be easier for people to eat. And I'm not even sure if I'm, there's a lot of noodles here, so I'm not even sure if I'm going to use all of them. So we'll see here. But I'm kind of excited about this because they sure look good. Maybe I am gonna use all of them. And I grated some cheese. I decided I'm gonna put some cheddar in and just make this sort of a, a cheesy tuna noodle casserole. So at the bottom, I can see I have, I mean, I have a few blobs and uh, that's okay. I, I, think, uh, I think overall, these look really good. If you saw my one from yesterday, I wasn't that impressed with <laughs> my technique. So I'm basically going to just try to combine this together. I'm not even sure if I have the right proportion of tuna stuff to noodle stuff, but we'll see. I'll just do my best. Kind of mix it all together. Yeah, I probably have more noodles than what I really wanted, but that's okay. That's why I decided I should put some cheese on it. <laughs> cheese in there, some of my bread crumbs, bread cubes, just use them all. Okay, I'm going to put this in 30 minutes, 350, and then I think it's going to be cheesy and bubbly, and it's going to be full of noodle goodness. Oh, I'm losing stuff. I did clean the counter before I came back with everything. Uh, maybe later I'll have to add some salt and pepper. I'm not really sure. We'll, we'll see. But uh, it's going in. Look at that. I'm so excited. We'll see you in the next segment in about half an hour. Okay. All right, small problem. I stuck it under the broiler for a few minutes and uh, maybe for one or two minutes too long. So uh, I am scraping off these black ones, the black burnt ones. No cause for alarm. It'll still be edible. I mostly was doing this to test the noodles to see how they stood up to this kind of abuse. All right, let me just get these, these black things off of here. If I had taken it out one, one minute earlier, they would have been good. I'm not worried. I hope you're not worried. I hope nobody's worried. Dinner is still happening. So I'm losing a little bit of my topping. It's not the end of the world here. The most important thing is we have noodles that are still intact. They did not turn to mush. They didn't break. This casserole is hot and bubbly and cheesy. And I am going to put some in a bowl and try it. So. I might have to add a little bit more cheese on this since I lost my cheese topping, most of it anyways, but that's okay. I can do that. So here we go. I'm, I'm just so impressed that these held together like this. I mean, I, you know, they could have turned to 
to mush or disintegrated, but they didn't. So let's give that a try. They taste like noodles. Unbelievable. Now, what I would do differently this the next time is maybe I would soften these ones because these are because I use the calcium chloride instead of the calcium lactate, they they are still quite firm. They did soften up a little bit, but it would have been nice to have them just a little softer. But that's easily solved. So um, this is still quite edible. And oh yes, it is, Teddy. I promise. Um, very good. Like you know, I can hardly wait to try some other things with it. So I hope that. Uh, I hope that you give it a try. It is actually not that hard once you sort of, like, you know, I had to read the instructions a few times, watch the video a couple of times. I, you know, go back and look at, well, actually, you're better off to go back and look at the original video from Asian flavors, keto Asian flavors, rather than looking at mine that I did yesterday. Unless you, actually, yeah, you could look at both. You can see everything I did wrong, everything she did right, and then today's. And I mean, I think this is fantastic. So I hope you do give it a, give it a try. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'm going to stop the video now so that I can eat my dinner because it's uh, about two hours past the time I normally eat dinner and I'm kind of hungry. Um, we will see you on the next video. Are we rolling still? Mm -hmm. Because I am hungry. Egg noodles. Wait, no. Today we're making... No, stop talking. I can't say action and then talk. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to talk. <laughs> I'm sure I, every time I do that, I go... <laughs> I just kept my mouth shut. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to get overly dramatic about it. They're on three, three or four parts. Cajun... Cajun...